B-Rated Movies. Welcome to B-Rated, B-Rated Movies. I'm Anthony. What is up? Should I be like, it's your boy, Brian. Like, I need one of those... Like those tube things that you spin around your head like that. Oh it's yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. sounds like that wind tunnel. <laughs> yeah, I think our wives just kill us. They're like, why you always got to fucking do the air horn? Just say <laughs> hi. My name is Brian. This is a podcast <laughs> that I'm on. You don't got to fucking be all loud, right? <laughs> well, we got to sound like the Big Boy Morning Show, <laughs> right? We, like I said, we need to get one of those big, uh, those big things where it has all the sound effects. So if I was like, oh, I dropped something, boy, 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 boy or something <laughs> stupid. <you know? laughs> or if there's something that happens in the movie, it was like, wah, wah, you're like, <laughs> everybody's like, my family just died. And it's like, wah, wah, like completely inappropriate fucking sounds. <laughs> like, can't get yeah. it to that next level. They'd be like, these inconsiderate assholes. But, yeah. It's your boy. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, so tonight we have an interview with Rich Ragsdale, director of Ghost House, The Night or The Long Night, and the short that is soon to be a feature film, The Loop. That's gonna be nuts, man. If that if they if they turn that into an entire movie, you know, like an hour and a half movie, I'd I don't know if I'll be able to, like I said, I don't know if I'll be able to handle that, dude. Like, I was 100% so serious. Cool. It looks so, like, everybody knows that the only person that scared me growing up was Freddy. And this, when I just watched the short, like, I, it reminded me for some reason so much of, like, an old school, like, Freddy film. Where, like, I watched it as an adult and I was like, fuck, this would scare the shit out of me. You know, yeah, it, uh, it looks, looks amazing. really cool. But like, everything, I, it's just fun. Like it, it just feels like, like I think I mentioned it in the interview. I think it, it just it feels like, like a super fun, like, uh, like, like it. It's like a night at home in the eighties watching a horror mm-hmm. movie in your living room. Oh, except you know, the couch partners. But anyway, <laughs> no, like all of these movies that we've watched recently, like we haven't done it yet, but we're obviously going to do um, a ghost house episode. Yes. But yes, we've already put out our episode for the long night, which is, you know, just a mess up situation to be in, man. And <laughs> nobody wants to be put in that situation. So the, this guy has come up with these ideas for his movies listen to the freaking episode the interview of how the hell he got the idea for ghost house when he told me that i was like no fucking way man that like that shit's cool. real like when he told us that i was like okay well that's another reason why i probably will never go to thailand for vacation you know yeah unless there's like a downtown thailand where there's like no forest anywhere near you <laughs> like maybe but super amazing like ideas that this guy has done already. And then the stuff that he said that he's working on as well. Like, damn, that's all I can oh, say. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a fun interview. This is a good one. Yeah. So I guess get yourself a drink and sit back and enjoy. It yes. Thank you again, Rich. Right. Thank you, Rich, and uh, I hope everybody enjoys this interview. Yes. Where, 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 where. No. What's the exit sound? <laughs> <laughs> a door slam. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. How come um, in yeah. Ghost House? How come they? Didn't, how come they? Y'all didn't say the plane crashed when those three assholes got on the plane? Left? No. <laughs> how, come you didn't, how come you got beat up so easily? Yeah. Such a <laughs> well, there, there's a story behind that, but oh, I was just joking. No, no it's, <laughs> you're not the first person to ask. So it's like, oh, like you really want him to? I don't know. We could talk about it. Yeah, you guys, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm uh, pretty thick skinned so. 
Oh no, no. I, you know, I, I've you know, seen I mean, all of them have been great. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh yeah. We really enjoyed both movies. They were really fun. And cool. the short. Oh, oh yeah. The loop. The loop. Oh yeah. That, Dude. That, was, that was a lot of fun to make. So we'll have to talk about the loop. That one. Yeah. We're working on a feature. So uh, I am excited for that. That looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would a, be. So All are right. We or are we, or are we? <clears throat> well, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll cut whenever we, whenever we begin. Well, I'll just. So you want to start this one, Brian? Nah, man, you go for it, dude. Okay. Well, uh, late. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all good. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah, uh, we appreciate it. No, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're here with Rich Ragsdale, uh, director of Ghost House and uh, The Long Night. Who? Which we did our ep- oh yeah oh and the loop the the short. Yes, we just <laughs> did. I don't know if you can hear that big old dog in the background, but we just did our episode on The Long Night, which gotta say, man, it was good. You know. Keep it coming. Uh, we're working on it, man. <laughs> yeah. No. I think Anthony and I, like we say it, you know, when we get into these movies where it's, you know, and, you know, we'll probably talk about all the uh, the other products that we've watched as well. But if you can actually put yourself into those situations, like it makes it that much, like, better, you know? And so especially, you know, the entire storyline of it of, hey, let's go on vacation real quick to, um, you know, an Airbnb or potentially going to go buy this property. Then all of a sudden all this random shit starts happening. And then they freaking, you know, just, I don't want to give too much spoilers because, you know, people need to watch the movie first, but just the stuff that was going on where they're like, Hey, we're standing out in front of your house. Now I'd be like, what the hell? Like you can't do anything, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you're on vacation. It's not like you'd be like, Hey neighbor, come over real quick, you know? So yeah. great, great storyline, man. Yeah, I mean, a uh, good friend of mine, Rob Shep, actually sort of rewrote the script for me, like on the fly. That was that was a movie I wasn't, I, I didn't set out to make The Long Night. It was a movie that there had been a couple other directors on it, and they'd gotten fired or they left, or I'm, I'm not really sure what happened. And a producer mm-hmm. I know called me and asked me to come out and, you know, basically make this movie. And so I came out, and we had about a week and a half to sort of figure out how we were going to fix this thing. Cause all these people have been working on the script. It was a big mess. So, uh, my friend, uh, Rob Shep came out, uh, he, he rewrote the script, kept all the basic parameters. We had, you know, the location and that was it, you know, and, uh, we just tried to redesign as much as we could. There wasn't very much money left at that point. So, you know, it was a, it was a, it was kind of where, a rescue mission. Where was it actually recorded at? Uh, we shot in South Carolina, uh, outside uh, of Charleston. Oh, uh, uh, I lived in Charleston for a little bit. Oh, yeah. But, well, this was in, I think it's called Huger or Huger. Uh, it's just outside of Charleston. It's very rural. And the actually, the house that we shot in, they, they told me, was the oldest standing wooden structure in South Carolina. So Wow. But, <laughs> yeah, everything about, like I said, even the driveway up there, you're just like, they're never going to get there. You know, just beautiful, the whole, and everything, how you're saying there were so many people that, you know, had to go and get on. Like, the movie, it flowed very well. You couldn't tell that it was like, okay, these people were here this time, and this is a different storyline here, that it was very, you know, enjoyable to watch, very easy flowing, you know. Well, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Like I said, it wasn't a movie that I, like, had, you know, decided I was going to make this. It wasn't my passion project. It was kind of... Uh, but I, I mean, I, I was, it was so much Lay fun down to make. Seven. <laughs> it, it, it was a blast to make and the crew was great. And, you know, of course, Scout and Nolan and, you know, Jeff Fahey, they, they were all super cool. I, yeah. You had, uh, the, uh, Rob Zombie's Lori Strode. Yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, yes. You know, she was in ghost house, of course. And, uh, one of the producers on this movie, had uh, helped us out on ghost house and you know i didn't it wasn't my movie so i didn't really get to cast it myself so but they were like they knew i knew scout and i like scout and 
you know, she's super talented. So they, they cast her, they were like, you know, scout be good. And I was like, hell yeah. So I love working with her. We're very good friends. So. That's awesome. Oh yeah. She does possession really well. <laughs> oh, <thank> God. <laughs> Dude, Dude, watching a couple never, of these. There have been so many she times just like, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. She, she has that like signature sort of possession freak out move that she does. You know, when we were shooting ghost house, we were, you know, we were getting ready to shoot that scene where she's kind of like, like they're having like an exorcism, like a Thai version of an exorcism. And, and so we're talking about how to do it. She's like, oh, I know how to do it. You know, I just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Like we've never, uh, what do you call it? I want to say, like, seen such a badass, like, female person like that, uh, especially in uh, The Long Night. How, oh, like, yeah. the boyfriend is like, let me show you how to do this. And she's like, get out of my face. And, like, grabbed the shotgun <laughs> and started bucking people. You're just like, that a girl. Like, that that's a keeper. Like, what the hell is that guy's problem? You yeah. know? Well, Scout's it's- very much like that in real life, too. I mean, she's, she's very tough, you know. And I, I make her do you know, shit, you know, like run through the woods barefoot and stuff. And, you know, yeah, she did stumble even with her bloody foot. Yeah. Exactly. That's very good. Yes. She was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Then we mentioned, uh, <clears throat> um, oh, now it just slipped out of my mind. Just grab what I was going to say. Never mind. Well, Don't kill bad. <laughs> I have to say like the music and like the, like the whole atmosphere was really like, it was almost like an extra character. It just like, like was just there in the background all the time. It was really impressive. Yeah. You know, my friend, uh, Sherry Chung scored the movie and it's kind of weird cause I started as a composer and like I wrote the music for ghost house and, but w- this movie was a real slog, you know, uh, cause there just, you know, wasn't much money and, in especially in post and stuff. And so I just didn't have the gas in the tank to score it myself. And uh, so, you know, it was during the pandemic when we were cutting the movie and Sherry, who is a big composer, but she was just didn't have anything going on. And she agreed to score it for me. And she, cause she'd never done a horror film and she does a ton of TV. Uh, and uh, so we, you know, we got together and, and worked on it. I mean, she's a, I mean, she's a badass. She's really, really good. And the music, I mean, I couldn't be happier with it. I mean, my sensibilities are like way more sort of uh, abstract and kind of weird compared to hers. I mean, she, for lack of a better term, she's a very like Hollywood kind of composer, you know, does a lot of TV, does like, she did like Riverdale and a lot of those kind of shows. Okay. And so, you know, I'm asking her to do all this like weird kind of screeching strings and strange stuff. And she was always kind of pulling it more towards this kind of Hollywood sound. So I think that the fact that we kind of it was our two sensibilities kind of bumping into each other that made the music, like, I think really special. I mean, that's my opinion, but, you know, I, I think that she's, she's great and she just killed it, you know, it was better, I think, than what I would have done because I would have probably gone a little further out like weird with the music and and she kind of kept it grounded it was it was very cool which i mean kind of like the the interesting thing for me in the story like with uh with the long night is kind of how like they keep seeing things that would make you know normal people want to leave and they're like oh we're just gonna stay (laughs) just we're gonna stay we're gonna stay and then it's like (laughs) you when you want to leave you can't (laughs) It was yeah, a nice touch. It was, I guarantee it was the guy's idea to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, guarantee it. No, I mean, well, you know, in the movie, I mean, Nolan's the one that wants to leave and she's, you know, she's there for a reason. So she, but then, you know, he's like, fuck it, we're going. And then at that point they can't go, you know, the, uh, yeah. the worm is turned, so to speak, you know, so. No, everything. There's, you know, just the whole setup. And then I guess that's one of the biggest things too, is Ant and I, I think even during our episode, we're like, okay, dude, so you know that you're fucked no matter what you're doing. So do you try to just hide or do you try to run through that 46 acres and try to get somewhere else? You know, like just that alone, like, you know, putting yourself into their 
position and being like, I don't know what I would do, you know, because you can't be like, ha ha, our windows are locked or something because they're going to be like, uh, you said we're all out here wearing masks. We're doing illegal shit. Like your little windows aren't going to protect you from us, you know? <laughs> so it's just one of those things. And then, oh man, just, it, it was very enjoyed, enjoyed the long cool. night. It was well, very that good. Was, I think- Hopefully, you know what I think Rob was doing with the script was that like it was like they're there and then things are getting a little weird and then the bad guys show up and then it gets, you know, you're like, oh, almost like a home invasion thing or something like these bad guys are fucking with you outside. Mm -hmm. And then and then you get to that moment where it becomes like more like supernatural, you know, with spoiler, but, you know, uh, you know, she levitates and all that kind of stuff. It's in the trailer, which that was really cool. (laughs) Exactly. it was something I've wanted to do in a movie for a long time anyway, which was the levitation gag. Cause I, I just think it looks to me, it's creepy, you know, it's very like, creepy. Like control of your body and being kind of like, you know, lifted up in the air, you know, it's, and also to me, it was like them sort of just, you know, like showing how powerful they are, you know? So, you know, like a vulgar sort of display of power, you know? And so, uh, you know, and then from there to the end, it gets pretty weird. So, you know. Oh, that was another question we have. We had a, uh, when they were all lined up, how tall was that tallest guy in the middle? Well, you know, it's funny. He's, he, what he, the guy that, he, the, there was a kid named Rocco Bovo, who I work with a lot. He was uh, kind of our, he was a all around guy on set. And, uh, but he played the guy on, you know, the, the, the sort of master character. And we mm-hmm. would put him on a couple of apple boxes. We've made his costume so it was extra long. So he's at uh, least than everybody else. And, yeah, we noticed that. That's what we were asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not, you know, he's just probably like six foot maybe, but, you know, on the uh, apple box, he's about eight, you know, yeah. and then big horns and stuff. So, you know, it was just, and we made his costume extra long. So it looks a little weird, you know, kind of Marilyn Manson y or something. Oh, you know? very Marilyn Manson y. Yeah. Yeah, we're Which, saying that. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, go for it. My bad. Uh, I have to say, my favorite kill in the in that movie is the like Jeff Fahey going out there to confront the the cultists who he think kill his brother, um, and th- like they just tear him up. Yeah, but that one like- is just it's rough to watch. It's good. Yeah. They have, no, that's one of my favorite parts of the movie too, and I love the music there and stuff. I just think that everything about it is is that that's that's the kind of stuff I like to do. It's like very stylized, and you know, you know. I remember, you know, again, it was one of these things where we're getting ready to shoot it, and I go to Jeff and we're like, "Okay, I need you to get down on the ground. You're going to crawl, and they're going to start stabbing you." And he's just like, "What?" <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, always going to start I, kicking your ass even more. Just, just go do it. <laughs> no. So, but he put up with me. I mean, Jeff is, is is super cool. So it was a lot of fun to work with that guy. So, no. um, but yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm with you too. I mean, that's one of my favorite parts. I just, you know, I, I really like from there's a, the, it kind of from him being killed and then they kind of get into scouts brain and there's some, some weird stuff that happens. That whole sequence of the movie is my favorite part, you know, and my editor, Jay, I mean, he killed it. He really came up with some cool ideas to, make all that stuff work and be kind of, you know, I mean, we tried to make a very stylized movie. I, you know, I, I don't, I hope people like it, you know? Um, and that, that's when things start getting a little more psychedelic and stuff, you know? No, we enjoyed it. Like I said, flowed very easy. It wasn't oh, yeah. choppy. Like we, you know, we've seen some other um, movies that's been like choppy ish. We're like, wait a second, how did that happen? Where do those people come from? <laughs> What's going on right there? But yours, like I said, just very easy, you know, easy to follow, enjoyable to watch, everything. Man. Yeah, it's very simple, you know, but I mean, that's kind of the nature of making low-budget movies, too. It's like, just keep it simple and direct and, yeah. That was great. And then mm. well, we got Ghost House. We're going to yes. do that episode. Holy cow. Well, thanks to you, I don't ever want to go uh, to Thailand for vacation. <laughs> so that was one of my places where I was like, you know, I've been to China. I'll go to Thailand. And then I see this movie. I was like, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, now, I'm going to tell you, go to Thailand. It's the most. I've been to a lot of places, and Thailand is the most fun place I've ever been. Oh, that's another one of those ones where 
you go and then you see them start, you know, making their decisions when they met up with those two guys. And you're just like, what are you doing? Get out of there. <laughs> and it's like, hey, I got an idea. Let's go here. They're just like, yeah. I was like, no, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But it's yeah. also, a, yeah. Well, you know, I hope it comes across, but it's like, you know, we've spent some time in Thailand. And, and one thing, you know, it's like if you don't speak the language, when you meet somebody that speaks English, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll hang out with you for a while, you know? Mm -hmm. That was kind of the hope is that, you know, you meet these kind of British guys. They're a little creepy, but, you know, like, ah, you know, they, they, know, yeah. they know their way around. They're, you know, they speak the language. Yeah. You so. know, that is pretty funny. When my wife and I first moved out here, um, I, I'm a sign language interpreter. I used to do sign language. And we met a couple that was out here for, um, what do you call it, New Year's. And I was like, dude, don't go down to the strip on New Year's. Like, there's so many people packed up and crown and everything and so like they end up just spending like their new year's coming like a house party of ours and like doing all this stuff and you just pointed out that yeah because they knew their you know asl and i was the only person out here the asl or they'd be on the strip walking up and down without being able to talk to people so i think for like the entire week like we went out and had like at least one to two meals a day with each other but i didn't murder them or like set yeah. them up to be murdered <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. we still yeah. email back and forth to this day. This was, God, 12 years ago. Well, more you than know, 12. Yeah. yeah. They're probably still <laughs> out to the haunted ghost house area. Yeah. Back. Which, uh, I, sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh uh, like, I have to say, like, I, I've noticed a, a little bit of a trend between these two movies that Scout Taylor Compton has uh, questionable taste in men <laughs> <laughs> because they either get engaged to her and then go to a strip club or they don't inf defend them, uh, her to their, to their parents. Right. <laughs> Dude. And yeah. Well, you know, yeah, we, we actually, you know, that there's a, in, in the long night, uh, just it, it just something about Nolan kind of came off like that, and, and when we were shooting the movie, and when we started putting it together, we actually shot the opening scene of the movie during lockdown uh, because we wanted to have a scene where you sort of see why Scout is in a relationship with this guy. He's a nice guy. He's got a great house. You know, they're, everything's cool. You know, because originally we, the movie was going to start after, you know, and so you you start with them in a shitty place in their relationship, and then you're just like, well fuck it you know it just it, you uh, kind of lose the audience so we tried to kind of at least give you something to make you feel like you know you to understand that they, you know every couple goes through a rough patch so you know or and, you know he, he fucked up basically um it, but you know they start in a good place at least so yeah uh but yeah you know, to, and, you know, and in a good place so and the idea, hopefully, in Ghost House is, yeah, he's kind of a fuck up, but at the end, he sort of steps up and saves the day, you know. So I was getting pissed. I was really thinking, like, another one is, you know, you always think when you watch these movies, like, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And so I was like, ooh, this first guy, well, the let's see, the second guy who kind of had a change of heart, he's like, she's a nice girl. Before I said that, I was like, he's going to try to pick up on her. I was like, that's sleazeball, knowing that she's freaking just got engaged. You yeah. know, but then I was like, wait a second. Yeah. yeah. It's basically like, hey, put your hair down. I was like, oh, you're just going to try to hit on her. <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah. you root for people like Anthony and I, like we'll root for people like, well, that's the reason why you got killed. Well, it's because yeah. you're a dickhead. Like you got killed because you were a bully. You got killed because you broke into that person's house, you know? And so I was really rooting for that guy to be killed because I was <laughs> sure that he was going to be like, hey, what's your number, girl? Like, yeah. are you sure? You know, yeah. Yeah, maybe we should have killed him off. I don't know. But uh, yeah, you know, we, we wanted him to be sort of the nicer of the two guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that, you know, he's, he's kind of doing this almost a little bit against his better judgment, you know. Yeah. But out of a desperation. <clears throat> so, you know, uh, yeah, Which that, that does kind of come through a lot, like when you see that they were only acting that way because they're trying to save their friend, and then yeah. you see him doing the same thing to that couple, 
yeah. trying to save his girl f- or his his fiance. But they were so real kinda, smooth it's... about it, though, too. Yeah, yeah, they were. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and then you hear the timeline. <laughs> then James sort of thinks better of it, and you know, he doesn't oh. actually go through with it with the couple. But which, he did. Which, yeah. <laughs> Jim did beat up that security officer. Yeah. But he got choked out at airport. Yeah. Poor Jim. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 I mean, that was supposed to be a much larger, longer fight. And, uh, you know, we got to shoot in the airport. I mean, this is the oh, thing about wow. Ghost, it's like such a low budget movie. I mean, you know, by like, I mean, we could never have shot that same kind of movie in America. You get your money goes a lot further in Thailand. I mean, we shot it for way less than like, like maybe, you know, maybe a half million dollars. I don't know. Wow. And, you know, but we got access to shoot in the airport. But the problem was we could only shoot in the airport for like two hours and we had a bunch of stuff to shoot. And so we had to just get up there and kind of shoot it. And uh, we just we just didn't have much time to, to, to shoot it. And it, so and it just kind of, you know, we cut it together as best we could to. So the fight was meant to be a little longer, but you know, we went with what we got. Yeah, but That's I mean, it's point. also, you know. Yeah, he gets his ass kicked easy. Yeah, you know. be realistic though. You <laughs> He's know, a pretty guy in real life, James. But uh, yeah, but, and also super sweet. I mean, like the nicest guy on the planet. But I was rooting for that fight for you, Jim. All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah, I was too. Yeah, <clears throat> but you did redeem yourself when you what cold cocked that big, huge security officer and knocked him out in one hit. There yeah. you go. If you could have only That's done that to that British guy. Yeah, yeah. He had a gun in the airport, you know. <laughs> but he would have had to have the other guy's gun. Yeah. So I'm not going to bring my own gun. That's crazy talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, yeah. well, another one of those movies where you're just like, damn it. Like, why did you go and do that? You know? But yeah. I don't know. Like, we have some times where we make some questionable decisions where it's like, hey, you guys want to go see a scary house? Like, we talked about that. And some of our episodes were like us going to like old haunted places in our old towns and everything like that. Where now you're an adult and looking back at it, and you're just like, why did you do that, man? And so now <laughs> we have sons. And so we're like, damn it, I know in like eight years my kid's going to be like, hey, uh, I'm going to go sleep over at my friend's house. They're going to go do some dumb shit. And I'm going to have to be like, damn it. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the funny, the, the, the origin of the movie Ghost House was we had gone over to Thailand. My brother, who's in the movie, he's actually one of the couple that, you know, that Jim's trying to lure out into the, into wow. the jungle. Uh, and he was a producer. He's my partner in, in making movies. Uh, he, he's married to a woman who's Thai, and they had had a kid. So they were taking the kid to Thailand to meet the family. And my girlfriend and I went with them. And when we were there, she had real bad jet lag and I was trying to get her on schedule. And we were staying at this, just this little town that's kind of out in the jungle. Um, and, uh, I was like, well, come on, let's go for a walk. We'll get you on schedule. And we're walking through the jungle and we found this place where all the Thai, the local Thai people had come and thrown away their old ghost houses, you know, what the hell? So it's this graveyard of old ghost houses. And we're like poking around, taking pictures, taking things out of them. And I'm like, this is this is a horror movie right here. Oh my you know, god, is- exactly. What the hell? You really did that? Yeah. And so this yeah, is how yeah. you get me and Anthony, because you got us to watch the movie. And now yeah. it's <laughs> what the hell? So and you know, but you know, it, you know, to protect myself now, I I, I brought a ghost <laughs> house back from Thailand. It's in my front yard protecting me from Is it the know, one at the end where she's like, look how authentic it is? Uh, not that one actually. Mine that, is actually more authentic than that one. <laughs> holy hell! Some little village, you know. That's uh, awesome. No, that That's was a- that was a cool one. I, I <clears throat> kind of wish I taken I I had gotten to take that ghost house home from the end of the movie, but it was just wow. it was hard to ship. That's yeah. When she's like, "How are we going to get this home?" I'm like, "You can't pay shipping for that, lady." Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, like yeah. if it could fit in your suitcase, all right. But yeah, that's awesome that you actually did that, man. Well, that's you know, how, a, that's how easy that you came with that story too. Yeah, well, that's the that was the that was the kernel of the idea. So it really happened, and my brother and I were over here. We came back from Thailand. And we were trying to. We actually had an opportunity to pitch at this place, and so we were trying to come up with a cool idea. And that was the idea we came up with was basically wow. horror movie Thailand. So. 
I mean, it's kind of a dumb idea if you, you don't have much money and you fly all the way on to the other side of the world to make this super ambitious movie, you know, but it's like go big or go home on that one. So, I mean, it did well, real well. So. It, it was did. good. That was well, that was awesome. Yeah. That was a fun movie to make. It was really just like, and the Thai people are just, they're the greatest. I had the, I had the best crew over there. It was, it was really great. Especially the, Which, yeah. yeah. I think it's like, you guys want to take it? You guys want to have a drink? I was like, that's exactly, <laughs> that would be me. Like, all right, guys, yeah. we just went this horrible 72 hours, but, uh, you know, what are you guys doing yeah. right now? <laughs> you guys want to, you know, <laughs> catch up? Yeah. Like, no, great. Everything about that. It was awesome. Man, another oh. great one, dude. Appreciate it. For sure, we're going to end up having to do that, an episode on that one as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, which I have to say, one of my favorite moments in the movie is the exorcism itself. Yes. Because, like, just the craziness of it, but not just that, like, the the lady who runs the exorcism. Yeah. Like, like I wasn't sure if she's just, like, like maniacally insane or if she's trolling them because she had like this weird energy and it was just, it was great. Yeah. Well, she was awesome. (laughs) She's actually, I mean, she, she, unfortunately she died a couple of years ago, but she was a a, a fairly popular actress on TV in Thailand, you know? Oh, wow. I mean, she was just, she was nuts. I mean, she was really funny and we were shooting that, in this old, like a real old temple that was abandoned and we were shooting in there and it was actually outside of a cemetery. There was like a Buddhist cemetery outside and she came in one day and was like, there are ghosts everywhere here. You know, she didn't speak any English really, but she was telling my Thai AD, she's like, Oh yeah, I see ghosts everywhere. There are ghosts every, and you know, they wear those amulets. And so like you turn around the crew's just got like eight amulets on each one of them. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you start believing in it, when you start believing oh, in it, then you're going to get messed up. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and so that just makes sure the movie even that much better that, you know, you actually did. And like all that stuff was real to, you know, because like you hear, you know, like, uh, like a sort of like The Ring, for instance, like that type of movie where you're like, that's okay. Everybody falls in a well. You know, but for you to actually be like, no, like there's a freaking place where they have their ghost house. So they throw them out over there. You know, like we used to, we grew up or we lived near a Indian reservation. And so we had some Indian friends <clears throat> or native friends and they'd tell us some of their stories and we're like, what the hell? And so then like, it'd like creep you out. And our mom would be like, okay, well, guess what? You're not allowed to go out at midnight over there. And you're just like, I'm going to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But, like, the fact that you actually, like, nope, they actually had all that stuff there. Like, that's nuts. That's crazy, man. Like. Yeah. We just thought it was kind of a cool idea. Like, I don't think there have been, there's at least been a Western horror film that have, like, the Thai ghost spirit, the ghost house spirits and stuff in it. So, that was our little contribution to the genre. So. Awesome. Yeah. Now. Loop. <laughs> oh yes, Lo- the loop. Which uh, watching that, it was. It felt very eighties. Very like, like I, I, I don't want to say it's. It's not like Stranger Things, but it did have that kind of like, like inside the tape felt like the upside down, which was like really cool. But like, what the upside down would be if it was inside a videotape? Yeah, it's. Just- I mean, that was basically the idea. Just, you know, we just wanted to make something fun that was this kind of 80s throwback. And, you know, when I, I got back from Thailand, actually, we, well, we just finished Ghost House and it had come out. And I had an interview at uh, Crypt TV. I think it was Crypt TV, the Eli Roth's internet thing, you know, and they were looking for people to do short films. And so I wrote the loop for that, but then, you know, the budgets weren't good and they were like, we we were going to keep the IP. So, you know, and I was like, yeah, I did. I don't, I don't get anything out of this. So I just was, I was like, ah, let's just make it ourselves. And uh, so we just went out it. And uh, actually my brother, again, he plays the loop, you know? And uh, so it was, you know, it was meant to be kind of this just like love letter to all those kind of like cheesy eighties horror movies that you used to watch on VHS. So, 
You know, no. it was, no. <laughs> even the, the character of the loop supposed to be kind of like half Cinnabite, half Freddy, half Chucky, or, you know, half, you know, like a portion of all, I, I tried to kind of invoke all the different, you know, kind of archetypes of the eighties horror guys and make it funny, you know? So. No, it just reminded me of like, I've said it where, the only like I used to, I've watched horror movies my whole life, but the only one that was scary to me, um, I was Freddy, you know. Mm. And so when yeah. I watched Loop, I was like, "Holy shit!" Like this would have freaked me the shit out when I was a kid if I would have watched this, you know. It's just something about however that is filmed, however the storyline, anything when the kid's just watching the TV and then it does something and it pulls me into it. You're like, "Wait a second!" Like that would have like if I would have if that would have been around. When I was a kid, I guarantee that it would have been that and Freddie that would have scared me. <laughs> you know, no Michael Myers, no Candyman, <laughs> nothing like that. Like I said, the only person for some reason was Freddie, and now freaking Mister Loop. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we've written a, a feature script for it, so we're we're hoping to get that made at some point. You know. Uh, are you putting on Indiegogo or anything? No, I mean, well, you know, we're actually, you know, like, well, Gunpowder and Sky, who owns Alter, contacted us recently and were like, we'd like to put the loop on our channel. And we were like, okay, uh, you know, they pay you a couple bucks or whatever, not a lot. But, uh, and then they were like, but they, they also said, well, we're interested in talking to, you know, the filmmakers about turning their ideas into features. So we sent them over the script and, you know, we'll see. I mean, I think the script is is if you, if you like '80s horror movies and '80s movies in general, it's very much just kind of a love letter to all of those things. I mean, it's we say it's kind of like The Goonies meets Nightmare on Elm Street meets, <laughs> basically, you know. So and even yeah, yeah so. even more I, creepy. I think, the brother right there on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, people that. I thought that was funny. You know, it's like. I, for me, as a kid in the 80s, I remember that that would not be an unusual thing to be over at somebody's house and having their brother. Yeah, a friend. Some chick, a... You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, that one like, like freaked me out, man. And I'm an adult. Yeah. Nice. You know, but, uh, watched it. Yeah, I do feel like it kind of perfectly captures the what it was like to watch a horror movie like in your living room in the 80s. Like it, it had all the like the touches, the touches, like the nice touches, the feels of being like in an '80s living room. It was really cool, like the little cartoons, uh, yeah. commercials, and everything. Yeah. Well, it's funny, you know, because I, I did those animations myself, actually, that you see on the TV. And the first one is like a Walkman that's like like walking around, like shooting lasers out of his finger, and I was because <laughs> like. The 80s, like every cartoon that was on was like G.I. Joe or Transformers or whatever. They were all basically big commercials for a product. You know, you know, it's like they were trying to sell you action figures or, you know, you make a video game out of Pac-Man or something, you know, or I mean, a a cartoon out of Pac-Man. And so I was like, well, the one thing they didn't have was a Walkman 80s cartoon, you know, so I made my own. You know, yeah, that, that was, was pretty just cool. a, a little dumb joke, but that was for myself, really, than, you know, more than anybody else. But no, nope. it worked. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, no. yeah, we had a we had a blast filming it. We actually shot it in this house that like there's this guy that just keeps his house. It looks like it's been, you know, it hasn't changed since like the late 70s. So that's where we shot the, all the whole, you know, living room scene with the kids. Wow. How long did it take? Well, like, let's go back to, like, the long night. Like, how long did that take? That was, I think, an 18-day shoot. Um, wow. Which was pretty contained. I mean, we since it was all on one property, it wasn't it wasn't too difficult. Like, in Ghost House, I think it was, like, a 19-day shoot. And wow. We shot in a new location almost every day on Ghost House. So it's like, that was another pressure. It's like... You know, if you're making a big Hollywood movie or something and something doesn't go right, you you know, they can reschedule it and you come back and shoot again. But for us, it was like we had to get all of the scenes in that location in that day. And if it, you know, if something went wrong, you had to just improvise and figure out a way to fix it, you know, make do something different. 
because you weren't once we once we were done with the location there was just no chance we were ever coming back again so you know it was a lot of pressure <laughs> but yeah but i mean they, everything turned out awesome man you know like yeah, well, we're no, just no, I mean, to... i'm super proud of it you know and it was it was so much fun like it, you know the scene where they're like in the boats and they're driving to the temple at the end of the movie for the exorcism and they're on the water and like when we went to go shoot that to get to where that temple is, there's no roads. So you had to take a boat. So we had all our gear on a big barge, just like a, I mean, not a barge, but like a big wooden square, basically. It was wow. being pulled by those little, little boats, the little motor boats. And we had to, you know, we, they sent somebody out to the temple before the sun came up to light a fire in front of it so that you could, cause there's no lights or anything out there. So you could see it from across the lake. And, you know, we're just driving out there in the middle of the, you know, like it's just, it's a pitch black and it's just like, I mean, it felt like a total adventure, you know, you're just going out to this ancient temple on a boat with no electricity and it's just, it was so fucking cool. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> That's crazy, man. Ah. So it was a lot of fun. Oh, it's awesome. You know, you have anything yeah. working on right now? Yeah, I mean, we have a number of scripts. We have one that like looks like it could possibly go. It's actually, it's, it's not specifically a horror film. It's like a thriller that's disguised as a horror film. It has like this kind of alternate narrative that you see throughout the movie. That's that is like a horror movie, but it's it's a from a guy's book that he's written, and uh, that's a thing I think would be really cool to shoot. And you know, it looks good right now. And then we have a, a feature for the loop and. Uh, you know, a number of other projects that are in this sort of, in their more nascent stages. So. Yeah. Can't wait for them to come out, man. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, we're excited to do them. So just got to raise the money. That's the hardest. That's the hard part with all of this stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're, uh, we're seeing now that we've kind of been following along with people's, you know, like talking to a few people and talking to people with Indiegogo's and stuff like that. And it's like, there's a lot of work that goes into this and like the money raising. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the money is, I mean, you know, look, I mean, if, if it were, if it were cheap, everybody do it, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know have good ideas and you got to have, you know, people around you who are talented and stuff to help you make these things. And, you know, uh, but yeah, this is, it's, it's tough. So fingers crossed, man, you know, but hopefully, I mean, this, we, we have a couple of projects that look like they're, they're on the cusp of going. So nice. That is awesome. Yeah. Wow. And so yeah, that's, that's what's going on with us. And, and we do music videos and things like that in the, in the gap. <laughs> yeah, so that's awesome. And no, that's awesome. <laughs> But Anthony, yeah. So, no, I think else? that's yeah. No, man, I just really, you know, appreciate you taking your time, man. Talking. Oh to yeah, us. absolutely. You yeah, know, man, I appreciate you guys watching the movies. I really do. You know, it's a lot of people work on work hard on them, and we we you know do our best, and so it's it's good to hear positive feedback and stuff. Yeah, no, we awesome. You know, I don't know if you've listened to the episodes, but. You know, we. I haven't, I haven't listened to the long night because <laughs> I, uh, you know, I've been, I've been kind of, it's a little chaotic here right now. But uh, no, but no, like we, we do. Uh, let's see, who do we talk to? And we do try to find, like, uh, what do they call them? Like Easter eggs or like a mistake or something, you know. Yeah. But no, man. Like I said, it was really easy flowing and everything like that. You know, where they're like, oh, look, her her watch is on her left arm. Now it's on her right arm, like busted, you know, <laughs> like, what do you say? They, you know, I think the most part that we were, you know, I think we we're making fun of uh, the boyfriend of like, man, how come you couldn't take that guy? She had to take the shotgun from you. And then you're like, let me have a second try. And then you drop <laughs> all the bullets everywhere. And the girl's like, damn it. I should never give you that gun back. You know, yeah. like, well, I mean, you got stabbed in the back. <clears throat> so. <laughs> He's like, oh, you know, but no, like it's, yeah. Yeah. No, the Very one that kind of like I noticed that is during the, like before the exorcism, she tells him you have to cut off a finger. Yeah. She's like, 
do I have Ooh. to? And she's like, yeah, and then yeah. she just kind of like starts it, and then like mid exorcism, he's chopping off his own finger. Yeah, it's like it, 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 you know, the, the idea was that he realized that you know he was begging her to do it without having to maim himself, and so you know. Yeah. See, nope. If I was that, yeah. I'd be like, obviously, you're not too serious then. Yeah, it did. It, yeah, well, exactly. Well, I mean, you know, that was a sharp to, ass knife, though. Yeah. You see how easily he's just like, wink. <laughs> uh, like, because even like that part, like I was like, "What finger would I have chopped off?" Like, you know, that was going to be one of our questions. Like, what one would you do? But you know, what happens if he accidentally like was like grabbed it with his non-dominant hand and they chopped off like his index finger with his dominant hand? Then you're like, you're never going to be able to do anything. You yeah. know, a pinky. But I think that that was a good choice. The first yeah. two digits of his non-dominant yeah. index finger. I think those that one would be that was that was a good show. You can't chop off your middle fingers because people drive like dick hats, and you gotta let yeah. them know, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't chop off your wedding ring your, your finger now because hopefully your girlfriend will take you back since you you know went to that strip club that night that you got engaged. Yeah. You can't <laughs> chop off your pinky. You can't go grab a cup of coffee or something. You know. Yeah. So I yeah. think he made the right choice. He made the right choice. After, <laughs> after he's like, okay, I guess I'll do it. Well, you know? You know, in movies, it's always easier to chop off a digit than I think it probably would be in real life. You know, but what was that? <laughs> no, that's that was one of my things too. Watch the movie. I was like, shit, what one would I have done? Like, I, you know, like I was thinking yeah. someone else too. Like, could he be like, can I give you like my ear instead or something? Like a pinky toe, something, you know. <laughs> Anything, but no. <laughs> and the guy's like, "Chop it off already!" Yeah, <laughs> dude. And then well, that one, yeah. yeah, good job, man. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, you know, like one of the the one thing that we did shoot when we got back to the states was like, you know, so in the middle of the exorcism, it gets all kind of weird and calm for a second, and uh, you know, it gets kind of trippy. And we shot that here because I just wanted to make the ending a little bigger and kind of weirder because like i said we had these like super tight time constraints and stuff in thailand and there's a lot of stuff to shoot and it just didn't feel like like big enough at the end so we shot all that stuff where it's like i thought my thought was that oh it's like we've always seen an exorcism so it's like i'm gonna show you what happens inside the girl (laughs) during the exorcism you know so that's it gets a little weird there for a second then we go back to regular movie freak out stuff but yeah it did definitely yeah Sorry, go ahead. No, I said it was awesome. The two different point of views. Yeah, yeah it felt know, a different. Fun thing to try, you know, to do a little. I mean, because you know, we were trying to make a very mainstream movie that we, we could sell and that would be commercial, but that people would dig. And uh, you know, but so I, I wanted to try. I, I have this habit of kind of making things sort of sort of getting in my own way by making things a little too weird and stuff. So you know, it was just it was just a way to kind of put my stamp on it a little bit, you know. Um, I need to turn that awesome, man. Keep putting your cool. stamp on a lot more stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, I appreciate it. Yes, keep, keep them coming, man. And, you know, they let I don't me know if you've seen all those tags. I don't know how active you are, but I was like, thanks, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been I so. too active on uh, Instagram in the last couple of days. I just have been, Uh-oh. you know, a little swamped with some stuff, but uh, I'm going to go on there tonight and check it out but thanks for having me on guys oh yeah thank you thank you for listening to the podcast we are available on apple google stitcher and spotify give us a like and subscribe if you like what you hear